While Jesus was going through a field of grain on a Sabbath, his disciples were picking the heads of grain, rubbing them in their hands, and eating them. Some Pharisees said, Why are you doing what is unlawful on the Sabbath? Jesus said to them in reply, Have you not read what, have you not read what David did when he and his, those who were with him were hungry? How he went into the house of God, took the bread of offering, which only the priest could lawfully eat, ate of it and shared it with his companions? Then he said to them, The Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Immaculate Heart of Mary, St. Joseph, Blessed Mother Teresa of Calcutta, our patron saints and guardian angels, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today we celebrate this first Saturday, of course, always in honor of the Immaculate Heart of Mary in reparation to her Immaculate Heart as she asked uh, to be established this five, the five first Saturday devotion. And when we think of Our Lady's Immaculate Heart and we think of the saint that's also celebrated today, uh, Mother Teresa of Calcutta, we can't um, but see the re, uh, relationship between how much Our Lady and Mother Teresa were so alike in the sense that um, Mother Teresa really epitomized uh, the motherly heart of Our Lady. You know, when you think of the missionaries of charity that she established, who was the first missionary of charity but the mother of God when she brought Christ to St. Elizabeth and St. John the Baptist. And of course, Mother Teresa writes in her memoirs or those who have written about her said that she received a great mystical experience, Mother Teresa. And that's where her vocation to be a missionary of charity was revealed to her was when she had this vision on this train, I think it was to Darjeeling, where she saw herself standing with Our Lady at the foot of the cross. Our Lady had her in her arm, you might say, embracing her next to her, and she said it was as if Our Lady was supporting her, keeping her from falling down, like she was maybe, you know, just like she was John, the, the beloved disciple there at the foot of the cross with Our Lady. Our Lady was also, I think, supporting John. She's the valiant woman. She's the strong and courageous woman who stood there faithfully at the foot of the cross. And Mother Teresa recounted how that's where she heard the words of our Lord, Sitio, I thirst. And that is where she was inspired that she wanted to slake the thirst of Christ in all of God's people, that she would see God Christ in the poorest of the poor. And the poorest of the poor, of course, are those who are suffering and have nothing. And as she gave us such a good witness of that charity of God, Mother Teresa is really uh, one who lived out that imitation of Our Lady's Immaculate Heart, you know, living it out in, in its concrete examples, you know, seeing Christ in those, the poorest of the poor. And uh, the poorest of the poor are not necessarily the poorest because they don't have anything materially. The poorest of the poor, as Mother Teresa pointed out, are those who are spiritually bankrupt. And she thought she had seen the, the most bankrupt society, not in India, but rather in the West, where we had lost our moral compass. And we can see that our society today, our biggest problem is not our trillion dollar debt, that we have, but rather the, the big moral bankruptcy we have in our society when we can kill our babies and call it uh, health care. And um, we put people in jail for 
for uh, uh, observing God's law and not allowing themselves to call sin a good thing. Uh, this is how corrupt a society is and how really it is uh, poor. It really has lost its way. Mother Teresa uh, was really a prophet of our day and uh, she showed us you know, that what was really important in life was the, the charity that we show to one another. Uh, those are the things that really are going to last. Those are the true riches, the charity that we show to one another out of love for Christ, because in doing so, we are doing it for Christ. And in a day and age in which we have this misguided understanding of philanthropy, when we can call someone, it's again, moral bankruptcy, that we can call Bill Gates and Warren Buffett all these rich men who give billions of dollars to Planned Parenthood and promote contraception, we can call that philanthropy. That's not philanthropy. That's not the love of mankind. That's misanthropy. That's the hatred of mankind. True philanthropy was what Mother Teresa was doing. That was showing charity to the poorest of the poor, and she didn't have billions of dollars. She just had herself and what God gave her, her two hands and her heart, and served the poor. She served whoever was her neighbor. And so we have that good example of Mother Teresa. Also, her, you know, the sisters are so austere in their way of life. You know, they have two habits and a bucket. In a day and age in which everybody thinks they're poor because they don't have a cell phone, maybe they should go back to just thinking around, carry a bucket with them around for the day. Maybe that would put them back in the right perspective of what is important. Um, that uh, uh, that still is the uh, you know the thing that uh, wherever the mother, mother Teresa's sisters go in the poorest neighborhoods, maybe they're gang infested and full of violence. When the sisters move in, there is truly a transformation that takes place in those areas because they bring Christ with them, and we have Mother Teresa, who uh, is truly the the, the good example of one who lived out her consecration to Our Lady uh, to, the, to the utmost. And so today as we honor the uh, Mother Teresa and we also pay our due veneration to the Immaculate Heart of Mary, we see that we all, by living out our consecration to Our Lady, each and every one of us has a part to play in Our Lady's mission of caring for souls and for... Uh, just following Christ as Our Lady is wanting all of us to do. Some have been given rather, you might say, extraordinary roles, but as Mother Teresa said, it's not doing great works that is really the key. It's rather doing the little things with great love, which she, of course, uh, learned from St. Therese uh, of the Child Jesus, her, her great patroness and one whom she was greatly devoted to. And of course, Mother Teresa, um, uh, we ask her to intercede for us from her place in heaven, that we too today will maybe, um, if we haven't been uh, living out our consecration to the best that we should, that we too will cooperate with that grace that Our Lady is giving each and every one of us that we too can be missionaries of charity in our own way, uh, in our homes, in our families, in our local areas, by just uh, reaching out to those who are in need. And of course, all of us are in need in some way. Uh, just sometimes a word of encouragement or just to be greeted uh, or to just uh, to show concern for someone uh, and their and in whatever needs they may have is already um, a, begin, a good place to start. And let us ask uh, Our Lady and both Mother Teresa today to uh, help us to engage the culture in which we're in, we live in, that it is so much in need of the, the witness to charity, true charity, true charity that is also based on the truth because you cannot have true charity if you don't have the truth, and especially the truth of Christ. Now, our society has lost sight of that. 
It's trying to define truth according to its own standards. And that's not truth, that's a lie. Truth is objective and it comes from God. And it leads us to God when we follow it. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.